Yeah, that's the music you're going to hear tonight at Brick by Brick. That is Fozzie. Yeah. And look at what a coincidence. Oh, what? Uh, we what? have the lead singer of Fozzie hanging out with us in <gasps> studio right so now. So weird, right? How did that happen? Oh, my uh, gosh. I, I, well, I heard the song on the radio, and I came and just started knocking on your door. <laughs> so, this is my song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The legend is in the house, Chris Jericho. Welcome to San Diego, my friend. So happy uh, yes, to have you here. Yes, thank you. Love San Diego. It's a great city. And um, we got here from Las Vegas. We came in. You wow. literally just rolled in. L- literally, literally rolled in, walked no right off the bus that's straight crazy. into you guys right here. That's today, rock and so. roll, though. Yeah, that's very yeah. rock star. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's, it's, it's funny because when you're coming, it's, like, it's going to take us six hours to get here. And then, of course, you hit the traffic. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then there's accidents. And then, yeah. you know, some bum on the freeway is holding a sign. Saying, Give so me change. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Gotta um, stop for that. Yeah. So, anyways, we're here. Yeah. Everything is good. Excited to be here. And uh, it's Fozzy Friday today. That, oh, well, even though it's Wednesday? It doesn't matter. Okay. It's always Fozzy Friday. <laughs> it's Fozzy Friday. Yeah. Today. Yeah. That's right. Now, did you exactly. get a bit of the bubbly on the tour bus coming over here? Well, a little, or? Bit, little bit of the coffee. Yeah. A little bit of coffee. Okay. Oh, there it is. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I had so many things I want to talk to you about. But let's let's start with the show tonight. Looking forward to seeing Fozzy at Brick yes. by Brick. You guys are going to tear it up, as you guys always do. This is the first um, official headlining show we've had in San Diego. Because we had one, I think it was last year, but the band Iced Earth was playing as well. Okay. Mm. So instead of going head-to-head, which sometimes it happens, the, the promoters actually get smart and they just put us in the same bill. Right. I think that was like maybe at the House of Blues or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is our first ever headlining show in San Diego, which is so crazy. It's going to be killer. Now... Yeah. I keep seeing that it's going to be Fozzie with special guests. Is that a thing? Is that really happening? Do I think we... that's just, they just put that on. A, yeah, we're like you know, like a, a, a David Lee Roth is not going to be no, there. No, okay. what? Uh, Jimmy Page is not going to be no. there. Are you sure? No, a special guest is like you know, uh, whoever's opening the show. Oh, okay. Right. So like you're not. There's not going to be a run in by like Stone Cold or something like that. Well, why, why would there be? I don't know. I mean, special yeah, guests. Yeah, I yeah, just uh, you know yeah. just thought it would be weird. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. Do you need us to come and do some juggling act or something? We have a tap. Dancer. Oh, so you're covered. Okay, good. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm no, glad. We, have a, okay. uh, we have a great good, uh, guitar player called Jared James Nichols who's with us on this tour. That's awesome. And um, yeah, he, he's great. So yeah, it's just uh, it's gonna be a good show. It's a good show. Okay. Looking a good time to will be had by all. <laughs> all right, man. I break guarantee it. <laughs> Definitely want to check it out. Shows at 7:30 tonight. Now, Chris, I know you're a rock guy. You've always been a rock guy. What band did you love like growing up? What was your go-to band? The first band that I ever really was into was the Beatles. Okay. And this was like when I was probably nine or ten years old. And when I say, like, I knew everything about the Beatles, and not like for a precocious little kid. Like, I knew who Magic Alex was and who Aunt Mimi is and all this. I read God. all the books. Wow, deep. And then when I went to junior high school, um, I made my own little Beatles shirt because it's weird. Like at the time in, in, the, in the 80s. <laughs> no idea. Mm-hmm. In the early 80s, it wasn't cool to like the Beatles. It was no. a weird little blip in time. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I made my old, <clears throat> excuse me, I made my old Beatles shirt and then I went to school, junior high school and I noticed that all the hot chicks were wearing like Aussie shirts and Judas Priest shirts. Yeah. Van and uh, yeah, so I was like, well, if I ever want to get a date, <laughs> I should probably check out those bands. Yeah. yeah. So that's where it all started. And then I got really into Iron Maiden, Kiss, um, like I said, I love the police. They were a big influence yeah. on me. So there's a lot of those type of bands. ACDC, obviously. Sure. Now, so how does a kid discover the Beatles, get into the Beatles and all that stuff? Were your parents into the Beatles? Like how? Did yeah, you- yeah. It's like I, I'm, I'm an only child, so I didn't have the older brother, but my dad had a big collection of, uh, of albums. And the, the funny thing was it was like the record player at the time was like a giant piece of furniture. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. it wasn't it was like, like in a cabinet. Mm-hmm. Yes, in a cabinet, like yeah. for, for, for kids these days. Oh, yeah. totally. It would be a big <laughs> desk, and you'd lift up the lid. Yep. And then there'd be this 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 record player in there. So he had a bunch of those type of records, all sixties rock stuff. A lot of eight track tapes. Yeah. The first the first record I ever bought was an eight track tape, Beach Boys, Summer Fun. Oh yeah. That, that, wow. I, that I bought off a, a KTEL uh, <laughs> dial one eight hundred. Get the, the yeah. The oh, totally. Yeah. So that's kind of how it all started. And then I just wow. really got into it on my own, and then discovered kind of the harder side of things, the heavy metal side of things, and then just went from there. Were you ever into the hair metal side of stuff, like yeah, the was, poisons I, and stuff? Yeah, like that? And I, I, I appreciated that. I was always more into the heavier stuff. But, oh, okay. but the, like the best, any type of uh, time you have a new genre of music that comes in, whether it's hair metal or new metal or grunge or whatever, mm-hmm. the top bands are always great. 
like Poison was great, Warrant was great, yeah. and then you have this gaggle of other bands that come in that just ruin everything. Cause it's just, <laughs> That's and so the same true. the same thing happened with like you know you look at your Nirvanas and and, yeah. and so oh, yeah. Pons, Pearl Jam, but then there's a thousand like you know Mud Honeys and Enough's Enough, it, you know, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Chips, like, chip, chips Enough, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I got into that side of things. But to me, as long as it was cool, I never saw it as hair metal or not hair metal. Like if. You take like if Cinderella would have come out in ninety one instead of eighty seven, they would have been like the Black Crows, oh, okay. the same style yeah. of music, yeah. just ah. that one had poofy hair, yeah. one did not, yeah. yes. right? So, so one wore mascara. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then, and then, yeah, and then and then uh, as as it progresses, it's just the music is very similar. The look changes. The same with Skid Row. If Skid Row would have come out in ninety one, not eighty eight, yeah. you would never think of him as a hair metal. That's band. true. But you just do because of the time that they came now, out. Now, being in Fozzy and doing. All all the music you do and touring and doing all this stuff. Has there ever been a artist or band or everybody that you met that even you kind of fanboyed out on? It happens all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, you really? Know, um, I mean, sure. I mean, anytime you meet kind of your musical heroes, especially when you meet them on the same wavelength. Like, for example, like the best thing I can say is we just played a show with Iron Maiden on Saturday in Los Angeles yeah. Yeah. at the stadium. And they, they invited us to play the show. Still not completely sure why. Um, <laughs> That's so awesome. But yeah, I mean, it was 25,000 wow. seats sold out. Damn. And, you know, we played a show with Iron Maiden. We had a great show. And backstage, after you're walking by, you know, there's Bruce Diggs. How was your show, mate? How did it go? It sounded pretty good. And you're like, this is crazy. Yeah, this, this is mean, crazy. Yeah. So I think when you meet the guys, it's cool, but it's even better when you play shows. We, we, we did the Kiss Cruise a few years ago. We toured with Metallica in Australia a few years ago. The Maiden Show, like I said, done lots of stuff with Anthrax. And, and anytime you get a chance to play with the bands that you listened to when you were you know kind of growing up, it's it's a really cool experience, especially when you hold your own and you go from being a fan to a peer yeah. to a contemporary to a friend. Right. Yeah. Now, are any of the rock stars fans of yours from wrestling? Yeah, you get that too, so, for sure. So some of yeah. them come up to you and fanboy out about the wrestling yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, show business is, is, is very intertwined. So you'll always get wrestlers that are really into music and, and musicians that are really into wrestling and actors that are really into into music. It, it, it all kind of combines. When you are performing and living on the road, a lot of comedians are big wrestling fans oh, and yeah. music fans because yeah. it's a very similar lifestyle. Oh, yeah, with all the touring and touring, stuff. Touring, like be on the road, be in front of a live audience. For sure. How do you, how you connect with the crowd? Yeah. How you, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you're able to connect with an audience, you'll always have a gig because people will always want to pay to come see you. Chris Jericho is honestly one of the hardest working men in show business. Seriously. <laughs> not only does he wrestle, not yeah. only does he sing and is a rock star, you've done, you know, countless hosting gigs, acting gigs. You've been on Dancing with the Stars. I mean, you've done it all. You I'm know? on America's Got Talent tonight. I, what? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing on there? No way. Um, there's a guy in there called uh, Ryan uh, Niemuller. He's a uh, comedian yeah, oh, yeah i saw him last night he uh he, he he's uh he has like a he'll tell you like lobster arms he has a yes. deformity yes and he always wanted to be a wrestler so his wrestling name is cripple threat <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so we did a, a kind of a fun little piece uh with cripple threat and jericho and it's it's great because you, you they ask you to do these things obviously it's a, it's a huge show sure um but they released like yesterday the finale america's got talent headlined by share Oh. And Billy Ray Cyrus and, and Chris Jericho. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. You and Cher That's awesome. <laughs> you guys the same. Sonny and Jericho. Is what <laughs> it is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah it's, 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 it's kind of a cool little different. And I filmed that the day of the Iron Maiden show. So I had to go do this America's wow. Got Talent thing, then go to the stadium for the Iron Maiden show. Uh, yeah, not a typical a day, shall we say. What a life, very cool, man. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Chris has done it all, man. Uh, speaking of, we haven't even touched on the wrestling stuff. The man's a champion. The man's a champion. <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take a quick timeout, <laughs> come back, get into wrestling talk with Chris Jericho nice. when we get back on the show on Rock 105.3. <laughs>